Next, let's take a look at some environmental blockers we can put here. So I'm going to put in some destructible objects and I'm going to trigger a door with a pressure pad. So first, let's take a look at the destructible objects. We have two. We have this sort of destructible column here and I'm just going to delete that. And we also have this destructible wall. So this is a bit chunkier and I think I like this one best. So I'm going to put that here. Now let's take a look at the destructible wall in the hierarchy. So as you can see, when I've got this selected, there's not really any components here. And this is because for the destructible objects, we need to open them up. So I'm going to click on the arrow to expose its children. And on the destructible wall hole, this is where all the options and components live. You might recognize that it also has a damageable component. So this is sort of the same across anything that needs to receive damage. So this this wall is actually destructible. It needs to receive damage. And when it receives damage, the sprites will change and sort of destruct and show you that. So first, let's look at, look at its starting health. It's currently set to five, which means if I hit it five times, it will destruct. So let's take a look at that jump on the moving platform and I need to hit it with my staff so pressing K five hits and it will it destroys so Ellen does one hit of damage for every style of staff swipe and every bullet that comes out of her gun so I'm going to exit play mode now now this takes a little bit of a long time so if I reduce this to two if I hit it twice then it will change into the broken pile of rubble and then I also run and die at the same time because I'm really great at platformers. So if I'm hitting this, there we go, that took two swipes. So I'm going to get out of play mode again. I think that's fine. Let's move on to block her path once again and I'm going to add in a door. So I'm still in the interactables folder in the project view and I'm going to click and drag into the scene this door here. I think I'm going to put it here. And I think that's good right there. Cool. So Ellen won't be able to get past this door at all. Now this door is just a door. Nothing will happen when we walk up to it. It will just block her path. One thing I'm going to do just for quick testing is move Ellen's position. So when I start and press play, I don't have to run through the whole game to test a mechanic that I've just made. So to do this, let's look at the hierarchy and find Ellen and click on her. And then I'm going to control click on cameras. And this will make sure that when I press play, the camera will start in the correct position. I'm going to just click on her transform and then move her into position. I'm gonna zoom in and place her about there. There we go. So just a quick test by pressing play, the camera and Ellen should spawn in the correct place. So I don't have to carry on and do this. All the gameplay is still active. It still works. I've just moved Ellen and the camera. So I'm gonna exit play mode and I'm going to activate this door with a pressure pad. So Let's look at the pressure pad still in the interactables folder. There's the pressure pad. I'm going to click and drag that in. This can be a little bit fiddly with positioning. So I think that's okay. If I press play now and test this, I'll be able to step on this pressure pad and stepping on it will activate a sound. The button will light up, but nothing will happen. And that's because it doesn't know that it needs to open a door. The door doesn't have anything connected to it. It's just two separate objects. So let's link these objects with the event system. I'm going to exit play mode. And take a look at the pressure pad in the inspector. I'm going to scroll all the way down. And here you can see we have a pressure pad component. This is holds all the settings for what the pressure pad can do. So we can see that there's the type of items that can be on there 
uh, how many items needs to be on there for it to be activated. And once it's activated, it calls this on pressed event here. So when it's pressed, it will change the sprite so it looks lit up and it will play a sound. So another thing that we want to happen when we press on this is we want the door to open. The way the door opens in this project is it plays an animation. So let's look at doing that now. I'm going to add an event here by pressing, pressing the pus button. And I'm going to find the door in the hierarchy, click and drag that into this empty slot here. And now this has changed to say no function. One thing to note when you're clicking and dragging something from the hierarchy into the inspector is that if you just click it, you will in start inspecting the door. So what we want to make sure is that we actually click and drag and not just single click. So looking at the pressure pad, I'm going to scroll back down after showing you that. We need to play an animation. So we are going to click this option here. And here are all the different sort of types of functions we can do. So we want to look at the animator. And here in the animator, we have uh, a bunch of functions that we can trigger. And what we're interested in is playing an animation. So we need to find the play string. And string is important because what it's going to do is look at the file names of different animations and we need to match that file name. But how do we know which file names to plug into here. So we have a folder filled with animations. If we go to our project view and we go to art and expand that, we have, I'm just going to close this sprites folder just so it's nice and tidy. If we expand the animations folder, we have an interactables folder and this matches the prefab structure. So if you have an interactables prefab, chances are its animations or art will be stored in an interactables folder in the corresponding section. So I'm going to click on this and here we have door closing, door open close and door opening is actually the one I want. So if we click on this, we can inspect it and see how it's spelled. So it's door opening. So the function will look for this specific word to trigger this animation. So if I go back to the pressure pad, here in the hierarchy and scroll down and in the empty slot here if I type in door opening and press play when I step on this pressure pad an animation will play and a sound will play and the door will open and now Ellen can get through to the next part.